Okay. This one's basically... Wait a minute. I have to turn myself into the flute guy. There. This one's basically how to turn this stick into a flute. Now, this is a little thick for what I like for flutes, but it deserves to be something, so let me get a flute. Um, I've already done the embrosure. And, um... G-sharp. I can hear that. No, I can't. <laughs> Fooled you! Now, what I have is this meter. Pretty close. Now, if I want to make it sharper, actually that's right on. If I wanted to make it sharper, I could sand down the end a little bit, and that will change the pitch. But if I go too far and I make it too sharp, oh well. Try another one. Okay, now, the next thing I want to do is decide where I put the holes, what kind of flute I want to make it. I find that when they're thick walled like this, I like I like them better with just the five hole uh, kind of na Native American flute scale, pentatonic, whatever. And I have a formula that I use to figure out the holes, and it all has to do measuring. This is quite a wonderful ruler because it not only measures in the inches, it also does it in the millimeters and centimeters. Very nice. Um, I never liked working with millimeters and centimeters growing up. Um, now I do, at least when I'm making flutes. So I look at this and I say, okay, we're at 300. 78 millimeters from the center of the hole to the end. 378, that's our magic number. Now I want a percentage of that. So I times it by point, let's say 78%. Some people will start at 83%. There's different, different, everybody's got their own deal, okay? That tells me it's, uh, that didn't tell me anything. 378 times 0.78, I'm at 294, 295. So we mark our first hole. It's going to go right here. 295. What a thrill. You know where the first hole's going. Now, I could mark all the holes. And uh, I really probably should. But I'll do that later. Right now, we're going to drill the first hole. Uh oh. My drill has a big bit in it. I don't drill with big bits generally, especially. For the first hole. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change out this big bit real quick. Well, probably not real quick. I don't even think you can see me anymore. You can't see me. I'm going to uh, grab one of these little tiny bits, three thirty seconds, something like that. Just a little tiny bit. It's a little bit. That's why they call it a bit. It's only a little bit. Tighten down the chuck. Why do I call it chuck? I mean, why not Frank? Jerry. And why do I always have to go in the wrong direction? Firstly. Anyway. After three days of tightening the chuck, the bit will be in the drill. Turn it on. Ah, what a beautiful sound.
sound. I have this little tray built here to hold the bamboo nice and steady. And I'm going to drill that one really like right on the line. Just make a little tiny, tiny hole. A little tiny hole. I don't know if you can you even see it. A little tiny hole. A little tiny hole. So, I wonder if that changed it any. Let's see. Even that little tiny hole, you can hear the difference, right? Alright, now we're going to expand that little hole. This is the fun part. Let me just move the camera over. We're going to expand that little hole. And the way we're going to do that is with fire. I'm going to pick a nice iron with a nice pointy pointy tip. And I'm also going to pick an iron that's a little bigger just in case my measurements are way off. And um, it could be off a bit because the thickness of the wall of the tube does affect how far up and down the holes go. Uh, for the mathematicians out there, they probably get it right the first time every time. For guys like me, it's a little bit of a guessing game. I'm just checking the time to make sure I got enough time. Only going to do probably a couple moves. So what we got here is a propane torch heating and iron. These irons are very cool. I actually got them from Eric the flute maker. Eric the flute maker. We had a wonderful day together, and I ended up taking these home. And um, very appreciative. He really, really helped helped me in flute making. So, you can check out Eric the Flute Maker, but don't buy his flutes, buy mine. He has plenty of customers. I haven't had one yet. <laughs> uh, I get to be a hand in front of the camera here. I think that's Eric's fault. If you go watch his videos, you'll know what I'm saying. And here is the coolest thing about maybe flute making. Burning the holes. Normally I'd do this over there. I'm going to take it over here so you can see. We go right into that little tiny hole and I just burn until I have a bigger hole. Not much bigger. Because I don't know yet what note I'm going to get. A little bit of steel wool. got a nice hole. Now, also, in order to encourage a decent pure note, I want to sand out the inside a little bit. Now we're going to see what we have. B flat. So we went from a G sharp flat. I have this cool chart and I can look and I can say a G sharp should be a B on a pentatonic minor scale. The next the next uh, the next note up. So I have to make that a little bit sharper since it's a B flat. Now I do that by ever so slightly, I either make the hole bigger or I move it this way. And I'm just going to move it that way a little and make it a little bit bigger. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Then I kind of breathe through them. Try to even the temperature out. Still B 
B flat, but it's as sharp as a B flat can get. Now I'm getting a bigger iron. I'm going to take the larger iron and just expand that hole a little. And, and I'm kind of putting pressure going north here as I'm doing it. Luckily that iron wasn't really, really hot, or it might have moved too far too fast. But see, this is kind of, like I said, a thick wall bamboo. You usually don't get that problem too much. Okay, now it's a B, but it's a flat B, but it's not a B flat. So it's a flat B, but not a B flat. So we're going to do the same thing. Just expand and move the hole that way just a little bit. A little at a time. Don't want to get too excitable about this. You can see it makes a lot of smoke. Normally I work right over here, right where the fan is. And I turn the fan up a little bit. But since I'm doing this video, I have to suffer for you. Now the thing is, we're going to get this perfectly in tune, but we're going to get it perfectly in tune in this environment. Now when the flute changes environment, it's going to change tune. So there. Now if you've got any math geniuses out there that can help me do easy calculations and conversions for humidity and temperature. I know there's a program out there.